I saw this light in Lidl's and I thought, okay, that'd be interesting to take a look inside. It was £20. And it's one of the sort of ceiling mounting lights with the passive infrared detector underneath it. And it's got the general sort of ratings. I'm not sure why it says mauve. I wondered, what does that mean? I think it must be the model number of the light. It's not anything to do with the colour of the light output. It says motion sensor, powerful light output, 1,300 lumen, long life, 15 years, never change a bulb again. Is it wrong to be even with Philips? Is it wrong to be cynical about that? Up to 90% energy saving, up to obviously starts at zero. Uh, guarantee five years LED guarantee so it's kind of saying long life 15 years but five years warranty in the LED it doesn't say anything about a warranty in the power supply but anyway that's me being cynical hold on I'll just nudge this up so you can see what it says at the bottom decorate your home with warm white LED light bow 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 detection right let's take a look at the light which uh is currently lit because it's currently detecting, even though it will now probably immediately go out that I'm now that I'm actually pointing it directly up at the studio lights. And it lights fairly even, as you can see, it's completely saturating out on the camera. It looks quite nice, and it's the type of light fitting that has the metal back plate and then it sort of bayonet caps onto that the cover. So let's pop the cover off. I shall turn the light off so we can actually see. What we're looking at. Um, I should mention that it draws 130 milliamps on the main supply, 18.8 watts and 0.55 power factor. Okay, that's the statistics out of the way. Let's paint it cap it off. And this is where the instructions fall down slightly. It's very easy just to paint it cap. You just turn it like that and it lifts off. And then you can't really get it off because inside is that little wire and it doesn't mention that anywhere in the instructions about even unplugging that but unplug it does and we've got a little sensor in the uh, lid which is quite loose and we've got the classic arrangement in these with the Britification the safification uh, just give me a sec I'll see if I can focus on that better it's like unlike the Chinese import ones that come as a direct import it doesn't have the bare circuit boards. These ones, the circuit boards, are under these plastic covers so that people can't touch them and get electrocuted. That's nice. It's got an earth wire onto the earth board onto the case. That's nice. It's got the. I just terminated this with a bit of flex. I found it's got fairly generous terminals and it's got a plastic housing around those terminals, so it's not easy to get a careless whisker, a George Michael, a careless whisker onto the earth case. Well, that's it. Right. Well, apart from the fact that it's got Philips embossed in here, I couldn't actually tell the difference for this and a generic Chinese one. So let's open it. That's the best bet. So I'm going to pause momentarily while I do that because it's not really the ideal workbench here. It's my temporary studio. Uh, but I'll open the passive infrared detector and the driver and I'll probe out the LEDs and we can then continue. The unit is now in bits, so let's investigate the individual components. The LED panels consist of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pairs of LEDs in parallel, and the circuit board material is just FR4 type material. I don't think it's particularly thermally transmissive. I think they're just relying on the fact they're well spread over a large area. And they rate each of these supposedly for watts. The LEDs are arranged as parallel pairs, and they're quite small LEDs. And they don't even have that, you know that thing where the lights often have a large expanse of copper to try and take the heat away? They're not doing that. But having said that, I've tested these and they are individual chips. They're only about 3 volts per LED. And the reason they've got them in parallel pairs might be to spread the load across them. Or it might, if I was really cynical, I might say that it's so that if one goes open circuit, the other one will do double duty and bridge that and keep the light going and avoid any awkward warranty recalls. It might just extend it out with the warranty period. I don't think any of these lights will ever really achieve their, their rating. It's got the little push-in connector, but it's also got a solder pad that you can solder the wire directly on if you want to bridge them. And because it's designed for the British market, well, the European market and American market, it comes with little plastic guards to stop you poking them with your fingers and getting electrocuted. Oh, so sweet and thoughtful. The power supply, this is where I shall zoom in. By far the most interesting bit is here is actually the passive infrared detector, but we'll, we'll save the best bit to last. So I'm just going to just bump up, pow, like that. 
The power supply has what you'd expect from Philips product. It's just that small thing that the chippy Chinese imports don't do. It's a little bit of filtering on the input. So they've got a rather unusually low resistor value here. They've got 4.7 ohm, which is acting like a fuse. They've got a class 2 suppression cap across the rails. They've then got a com mode suppression uh, inductor. Now the com mode suppression choke actually has two ohm windings. It's a lot of very fine windings, so it's just designed for low current applications, but quite a, a sort of high inductance. It comes through that. You've got a bridge rectifier on the back. It then goes to this uh, smoothing capacitor here, which is rated. Can I see the rating? No, because it's hidden directly behind. Um, yeah, it's hidden right behind this capacitor. That's annoying. But anyway, it's a fairly generous capacitor. There is another small capacitor here. That's a power supply for the chip. And the chip is a bright power, BP28330. Now, I'm not really surprised that Philips are using the bright power chip, which is a buck regulator. Um, bright power seem to have become established as a sort of market leader in these, and the posh products tend to have BP chips in them, bright power chips. So uh, the power supply is derived for that chip from very simple, you've got a couple of resistors in series leading down to this small electrolytic capacitor here, and that just powers it directly from the sort of low frequency, well, at that point it's rectified DC uh, side of the supply. Other things in the back, we've got a smattering of resistors, a little tiny capacitor here, I believe. Um, the resistor there across the load for stability, uh, probably. Uh, the freewheel diode off the buck regulator and then two sense resistors. These two sense resistors are the ones you'd change if you wanted to nudge the light fitting down a bit to customise it and make it last longer because they often push these things quite hard. This inductor here has three connections. It is just an inductor. Um, the three connections are one, two, and three. This one connected here doesn't make sense in the schematic, so my guess is that it's actually just a, a physical support, and that makes sense because it does make it much stronger if it has that extra anchorage on it to actually sort of grip it onto the circuit board. After that, it's got a smoothing capacitor and output that the LEDs are across that smoothing capacitor, and that's fundamentally it. So I'm guessing this little tiny little capacitor here is probably for noise filtering than anything else. That is going to the negative connection of the capacitor, so I guess that is a noise suppression one. Okay, interesting to note. So the current from the rectifier goes to the LEDs, it then goes through, uh, and the capacitor across LEDs, it then goes through that inductor in such a way that when the inductors, uh, when the actual circuit is turned on by this uh, chip here, current flows through the LEDs and the inductor, but that limits the current flow, but then once the inductor reaches a near saturation point, once it's been on for a certain time, it turns off and the magnetic field collapses, goes through this diode and gives it a double dose. That uh, means it's very efficient, it operates in both sort of the turning on and off cycle. So by pulsing this inductor, it regulates the current through the LEDs. Um, the LEDs, I think I already mentioned this, it's roughly 20 volts a panel and there's four of them, so it's about 80 volts, so that uh, just regulates to that. It, it doesn't have to be fancy like the... It doesn't need to get close to the peak mains voltage, like the uh, the ones that have this very simple current regulation chips in them do, the ones where it's the little chip mounted directly on the board, and it acts like a sort of resistor. Linear current regulators? I could just say linear current regulators. Anyway, I digress. Let's take a look at this. This is the passive infrared detector and on the front it's got a little round circuit board that is basically the whole passive infrared detector circuit. It's designed to take a voltage just above 3.3 volts, it regulates it down itself and it's got a little chip in the back for uh, controlling that. Did I know what that chip was? I think I did but have completely forgotten what that was. I'm just going to see if I've got notes here that will have that. Uh, yes, I do. The passive infrared detector chip, the little 8 pin chip, is marked SS002A. I did not come up with anything for that. The more interesting circuit board, though, here 
It's got three connections. It's got the ground, uh, well, the ground reference for the circuitry. It's got the signal back and it's got the uh, plus volt. So let's say zero volts, although with these circuits, it's never actually zero volts. So let's bring in a doodle. I shall put that out of the way. I shall bring in a doodle. Is this going to fit? It's, it is kind of going to fit. If I squish it up there, it will fit perfectly. That's absolutely fine. Here's how it works. It uses this resistor as a current limiter. Then it goes through, have I got something smaller to point with? No, if not really, okay. Uh, it then goes through this diode under here. And then there's a little Zener diode or Zener diode, which caps it down to about 3.9 volts. I should have added that in. Let's add 3.9 volts. 3.9 volts, said Clive, drawing it in with a thick tip Sharky, that Sharky, Sharpie. That was quite squishy. There's also a little capacitor across the Zener or Zener diode, and that gives a 3.9 volt supply that goes out to the circuitry. That then goes from that capacitor straight out to the passive infrared detector module. There are no adjustments. We have the uh, little light sensor here, and it just ha it's pre-programmed with A intensity, and the time is just pre-programmed with A time. That 3.9 volts, though, also turns on this thyristor here via a 100k resistor. It's a super ultra sensitive gate thyristor. And there's also a little transistor down here that when it's turned on, it effectively shunts that uh, the gate of the thyristor to the zero volt rail. I've put zero volts in inverted commas here, just as a reminder that this isn't actually something you could touch. It's what the circuitry sees as its base reference, the zero volts from the circuitry level, but it's actually referenced directly to means. In fact, it's one diode away from the live connection. This is where it all gets very interesting because to be able to switch the AC load with the thyristor, which the advantage of thyristors over triacs are you can get very sensitive ones. This one can be turned on by literally just a few microamps of current. It's ultra sensitive. Triacs tend to require several milliamps. And when they require several milliamps, they need something like a capacitive dropper to provide that. And that starts eating up space. In here, the only power supply is this 39K resistor here, which is dissipating over half a watt. And it's next to a capacitor. Yeah, it's got to get warm in there. But it is well ventilated. It's got that big hole out the back to let the smoke out. Here's the interesting bit. The thyristor is directly across a bridge rectifier. Now, on one side of the bridge rectifier, connected to the AC side, is live, the mains live, and the other side is the load. That's the lamp that's going to be connected between neutral to the load here. And they're connected across the two AC terminals. If you short the circuit, the positive and negative terminals of a bridge rectifier, it just turns into diodes in series. So, say for instance, if I had a Let's get the squishy sharp in again. If I shorted that out with a dotted line here, what would happen is that if live was positive because it's alternating between positive and negative because it's alternating current, while it was positive, if that was shorted out, the current would flow up through this diode, down through the short circuit, through that diode, and to the neutral or the load at the other side. And likewise, if that was negative, it would be via this diode along the short circuit and then that diode. So what the thyristor does, it bridges out the bridge rectifier. And basically it means that the thyristor can then switch AC, but with the slight downside that you've got two diode drops plus the thyristor, but when you're just switching LED loads, it's, that doesn't really matter at all. So that's ultimately it. We've got the module, see the wee dotted line I added in here. That turns the uh, transistor on to turn the light off. So that, to make it compatible with that circuitry, they've got a little extra transistor on the back here. They've got a little 3.3 volt regulator to generate a 3.3 volt stable supply from the uh, 3.9 volts. And then over the other side, they've got a little transistor and they've got a resistor in here that normally pulls that base up. But then the transistor, when it's turned on, pulls that down and that transistor then turns off and then that thyristor can then turn on. It's a sort of almost like a Darlington-y type arrangement, but it's a level shifter effectively. It means that when you the passive infrared module turns 
the circuitry on, it releases the thyristor. It lets it actually turn on with that via that resistor. And I'm guessing that to make sure there's always a little bit of voltage across this to be able to generate 3.9 volt supply, that resistor will probably have been chosen. So the thyristor doesn't turn on at the zero crossing point of the sine wave. It won't turn on right at that point there. It'll actually be well into the sine wave on either half before it actually turns on. Ultimately, that doesn't matter a lot for the little LED loads. It'll be switching on within maybe about 10 volts or something like that of the, the, the sine wave. So that still allows it to keep that capacitor charged up because the passive infrared detector is very low current. But it will be a little bit of delicate balancing of resistor values to get that perfect. And that spots in that Philips light. I mean, it looks like it's a fairly generic light. It could be made by any factory, but the the key players here are the fact that it's got that little bit of extra suppression and it's probably not pushing the LEDs too hard. But there we go. Interesting thing and well worth taking to bits.